Imagine you are in an airplane, flying in the middle of the night, and it crashes. Miraculously, you survive, but you're in the Pacific Ocean. The lights inside the plane have gone dark. The world is pitch black, and ice cold water is pouring in as the plane sinks into the depths of the unforgiving sea. What do you do? What can you do? Welcome to Vertigo. In this episode, we will be exploring the tragic death of 70 people on board Aero Peru Flight 603 in October of 1996. There were no survivors. It's October 2nd, 1996 in Lima, Peru. Aero Peru Flight 603 is preparing for departure on the final leg of its journey, which is scheduled to end in Santiago, Chile. Due to the shape of South America, the majority of the flight will take place over the South Pacific. 61 passengers and 9 crew members are on board. The plane is a Boeing 757, only 4 years old. The captain is 58-year-old Eric Schraber, who has logged almost 22,000 flight hours. And the first officer is 42-year-old David Fernandez, who has logged almost 8,000 flight hours. The plane takes off from Lima's International Airport at 42 minutes past midnight. Almost immediately, the pilots get a warning that the altimeter reads zero. The altimeter displays the height of the aircraft, so a reading of zero is obviously incorrect, as the plane is currently in the air. The Boeing 757 is equipped with three altimeters, and all of them are showing flight level zero. This is a major problem. Then, they suddenly lose another crucial instrument. The flight speed indicator is also providing false readings. As the airplane leaves the lights of Lima behind and glides out over the pitch black Pacific Ocean, the pilots are flying blind. The captain declares an emergency and attempts to head back to Lima. The flight instrument warnings continue. The crew get warnings regarding the rudder, mock speed trim, overspeed and underspeed alarms, and flying too low messages. The pilots are beyond confused with what is happening to their airplane. They have no idea what their altitude or airspeed is. The pilots believe that they could figure out the actual altitude they are flying at by asking the air traffic controller. However, the altitude information displayed on the controller's screen was sent from the airplane's Mode C transponder. As the transponder was receiving the same altitude information being displayed on the cockpit altimeter, the altitude on the controller's display was also incorrect. Faced with a lack of reliable basic flight instrument readings, constant contradictory warnings from the flight computer, and believing that they were at a safe altitude, the crew decide to begin descent for the approach to the airport. Since it is the middle of the night over the ocean, no visual references are available to convey to the pilots their true altitude or aid their descent. Since they are unable to determine the true airspeed or vertical altitude of the flight, they experience multiple stalls resulting in rapid loss of altitude with no corresponding change on the altimeter. While the altimeter indicated an altitude of approximately 9700 feet, the aircraft's true altitude was much lower. Suddenly, 25 minutes after declaring an emergency, the left wingtip of the 757 clips the water, tearing off several feet of the wing. The pilots desperately attempt to climb, and are able to keep the plane in the air for 22 more seconds. However, the damage to the wing is too much, and the plane eventually slams into the ocean inverted. The next morning, the wreckage was located, and recovery crews found 9 bodies floating with the debris, but the rest were missing. When the body of the plane was found, it became clear that the 757 was almost entirely in one piece and had sunk to the bottom of the ocean, taking most of the passengers and crew with it. With the help of the US Navy, 
the cockpit voice recorder and flight data recorder were located. After analyzing the data, investigators conclude the pilots were having issues with the PTO static system. This system utilizes external ports on the underside of the airplane that measure outside air pressure to provide data on airspeed and altitude. If these ports are obstructed, the computers generate false warnings. But why these ports would have been blocked is a mystery. Investigators use underwater robotics to find the missing piece of the puzzle. They are stunned to discover that the ports on this 757 were completely blocked with duct tape. Immediately after Aero Peru Flight 603 lifted off from Lima, maintenance workers cleaned the aircraft. A maintenance worker covered the static ports with tape to protect them. This is standard procedure. However, the worker then forgot to remove the tape when he was finished. The inspector, who was supposed to inspect the work, did not do his job. The captain, who did a walk around before the flight, did not notice the tape. It would have been very easy to miss silver colored duct tape on the hull of a Boeing 757 at midnight. The tape was supposed to be brightly colored for this specific reason. This small mistake had a catastrophic outcome, as the blocked ports generated false readings that the pilots were unable to understand or overcome. On December 13, 1999, Family members of the flight's passengers received one of the largest compensations stemming from an aviation accident outside of the United States, averaging nearly $1 million US per victim. The reason for the large settlement is because of the terrible way the passengers and crew died. Investigators were able to demonstrate that most of the occupants survived the initial crash and died due to drowning. Pitch black, freezing cold, soaking wet, and trapped in a metal tube sinking into the Pacific Ocean, it's hard to imagine a worse way to go. Thank you for watching. Until next time, good night.